welcome back to Creative Writing Advice with me, JJ Barnes. If you don't know me, I'm JJ. I am the author of How to Write a Story, as well as other books. I also have a film and a TV show in production. I'm over here on YouTube bringing you the writing advice that I hope will help you become a better and more confident writer. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how to write an anti-hero. I'm going to be referencing Dr. Horrible from Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. So if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube, I highly recommend it. It's a, it stars Neil Patrick Harris and Nathan Fillion and it's genuinely, it's an absolutely, it's an absolutely fantastic little movie. So Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. Now, an anti-hero is when your protagonist isn't a good guy. Essentially, they're not heroic, they're not a hero, they, they are a baddie. And Dr. Horrible is the perfect example of this because Dr. Horrible, he is motivated in the story to join the evil league of evil and he wants to kill somebody. He talks about wanting to throw poison in the water main. He is a bad guy. He is driven to do evil. However, he is a good anti-hero because as well as being a baddie and clearly a baddie and written as a baddie, he is very vulnerable and he is very human and you root for him. And that is something that's really important with your protagonist. Even if your protagonist is essentially a bad person, a bad guy, you still need your audience to want to stick around and see what happens. You want your audience to be invested in that person's story. So you can't just follow a baddie doing evil and give your audience no reason to care because then why do they care, essentially? You want your audience to care. And why Dr. Horrible is brilliant, because all the time you're watching it, you are hoping, hoping he changes his mind and tries to become a good person. It's, it's very, very well crafted. So to write a good anti-hero, yes, they have to do bad. They have to be morally ambiguous at, you know, at the minor end, or actively in pursuit of evil at the serious end, which is where Dr. Horrible is. He is actively in pursuit of evil. However, you have to humanize them. So for Dr. Horrible, he is humanized by his love of Penny, the love interest in that story. She is a good person. She is driven to help the homeless. She is pure. She is light. She is lovely. And he is in love with her. And it's through that love and that relationship that you have your hope that he is going to be redeemed. Because love is good and pure. So you hope that it will have a good positive effect on him. When Penny falls in love with Captain Hammer, who is the antagonist and the hero, he is the superhero who tries to save the day, it adds conflict to Dr. Horrible because he loves her. He hates Captain Hammer and he, he wants to steal Penny away from Captain Hammer, but she doesn't know that. And he knows that she would not love him being evil. He wants to give her all the benefits of his evil doing. He wants to buy her a shiny new Australia, but he knows that she's good and she is pure and she won't love him if he is true to himself. So then he is torn. Does he want to do what he wants to do, which is to be evil? Or does he want Penny to love him? And you hope, you hope that it's Penny that you are, that he will choose over evil. So when you write your anti-hero, remember, remember Dr. Horrible. He is vulnerable. He is human. He is funny. He's adorable in that sort of goofy way. And you care about him even when you don't want to, even when you know that he's going to do something terrible, you care. And try and put that into your character through their humanity. And I've talked before about how to make sure your characters are human. And that is so important with an anti-hero because that vulnerability is what will give your audience the passion and care for them. You will find yourself rooting for them even when they are doing terrible things. So put that in, make it so your audience care and root for them and want good for them. Because then if they carry on down their path of evil, you can break your audience's heart, which I'm not gonna spoil Dr. Horrible, I'm not, because you might not have seen it. Let's just say, if you break your audience's heart with the end for your anti-hero, then you have done a fantastic job. And that's one of the brilliant things about an anti-hero. 
you can write an ending that is heartbreaking. And if it was in reverse, wouldn't necessarily be as heartbreaking because the bad guy gets disappointed. Now, there are reasons why Dr. Horrible would be disappointing anyway, but the point is, no matter what you're writing, if your anti-hero has a bad end, it can mess with your audience's mind because you want a bad end for a bad character, but you like that character, so you want a good end for them, but that would mean you would want them to get what they want and you don't want them to get what they want because what they want is evil and bad, but because you care about them and you're rooting for them, that kind of means you want them to get what they want, which is the bad thing they aren't meant to get because they're the bad guy and you don't want them to get it, you want them to get the good thing. It makes sense in my head. But give your anti-hero vulnerabilities. Make sure that what they want is clear from the beginning, what they are driven by and why, and give them something that humanizes them. As I say, for Dr. Horrible, it's Penny. Focus on that and make them a big part of their personality. Something that, if they focused on that thing and try to follow that instead of their evil doing, it would have a completely different outcome for them. But they are an anti-hero. So make sure they do not follow the good thing. Even if you really kind of hope that they will yourself because you're writing them and you like them too for all their vulnerabilities and flaws and softness that you've put into this bad character. You want them to follow the good, but they follow the bad. I hope this has been helpful, genuinely. Watch Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. It sounds goofy, it is goofy, but it's an absolute masterclass in storytelling. If you want to look at foreshadowing, set up and pay off, characterization, anti-hero specifically, all of these things are really strong, as well as basic story structure. It's a very strong thing to watch, so it's the perfect choice to talk about as an example of this. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, your anti-hero needs all the qualities of a good person with their vulnerabilities and their loves and passions and cares, but they are still driven and motivated by evil. Or badness. Not necessarily evil, but negativity. So thank you very much. Please drop me a comment. Tell me about your favourite anti-hero. I always say this, but we can cover different ones with the same subject because the more you see it and the more you understand it, the better your understanding of it will be and the more easy it will be for you to replicate that into your own writing. So talk to me. Who are your favourite anti-heroes? And also, if you can subscribe to these videos, I'm bringing out every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at half nine in the morning. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any, but I am I'm working in some challenging circumstances at the minute, but I'm sticking to it because I, I care about it. So hopefully I won't let you down. And um, if you go to my website, which is jjbarnes.co.uk, you will find links to all my work, my writing advice blog, my social media. I'm a big part of the writing community and I love chatting writing with people on the Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So come find me. Let's talk. You'll also find links to all my work over there as well if you are interested in any of my books. So yeah, come find me. We'll talk and hopefully we can all become better and more competent writers together. Thank you very much. And I'll be back again soon. Bye.